Guys, welcome to the B stream. We have a good match upcoming. Just Saiyan and Ignite. Oh. Two pretty underrated players, I would say. Um, yeah, I'm joined but by... But like, they're good. Like, uh, that's what I say. Yeah. Actually, like, uh, I'm impressed lately by Just Saiyan. Mm -hmm. He's like a really talented player. So I'm really looking forward for, to see him in action. Yeah. And uh, the first match already started, so... You can so see let's go. it's gonna be Zoo versus uh, Tempo Warrior, probably the Dragon variant. Mm, so let's speak about the matchup. How do you feel about it? Um, it depends also how the Dragon Warrior is built. It, if it has like Ensof's first mate or uh, a bit more early game in it, of course it's better. But I think because it has like a Ravaging Ghoul and the nice early tempo cards plus Warrex, I think it's slightly favored for the Dragon Warrior. Yeah, like in general, the Warriors are favorite against Zoo because the Ravaging Ghoul and Warrex are just broken cards against aggressive decks. So, uh, hmm. but if you see already like the starting hand from yeah. Ignite, it's really nice. Like the double flame is really important, and I don't see like a Warrex or something like that in Saiyan Sand. Yeah. Uh, just saying, it's uh, like uh, kind of difficult decision what to mulligan. Like uh, in some matchups, you are inclined to keep the berserk, but but here I would be inclined to get full mulligan because the war axe is really the key. key yeah, you really here. need the early tempo card, otherwise the suit just snowballs out of the game. Okay, so so it's dragon variant, which is probably slightly better than the standard tempo warrior because the dragon synergy is quite good. Yeah. Um, normally, I would say this hand from Just Saiyan is super awesome, but if I see Ignite's hand, it's <laughs> telling well, me a different well, story. Well, uh, the Alex Rasa champion is awesome against control decks because it's 3 free charge minion, while against the aggro decks, you are more looking for the weapon or the revenging ghoul. So, yeah, the, the hand is good in general, but it may, it can very easily end up, it's not going to be enough. Mm. So, what you expect here, because from Ignite, like, because if he uh, coin out double flame him, then the, his, next, his next turn going to be. A little bit awkward unless he top decks something. But on the other hand, he just developed a lot on the board, right? Yeah, I think like the, the opener here is in general just so strong that you can just, even if you don't draw a, um, a true drop, you just can just. Yeah, like uh, the flame imp, I would say it's as strong as average two drop in general. So, yes, yeah, true, I wouldn't true. mind like just. Uh, oh. Play, choosing this play, and uh, there, uh, there's also like a big chance that you will top deck one or two draw because like the zoo is very low curve deck, so yeah, it's that's exactly what happened. That it turned out being perfect for Ignite. Mm, but the throwing berserker might actually be a really big deal if you would have played it. Um, or you can go just for the value trade because basically you deal with both of the minions and with the frothing. From just saying perspective, if you get run into abusive, it could be like kind of bad. So I really like the, the line the Justin uh, uh, choose. Hmm. Okay, so. So let's see, like, um, I feel like the gang boss is in general really strong here because it can't get dealt by a war or yeah. Like uh, the brand is in general dangerous, like if it remain on the board uh, un unchallenged, but uh, now Ignite cannot get any benefit of having this many on the board, so you will probably choose uh, the M-Gang boss. The question is whether you go face or whether you trade. Yeah, it's kind of tricky, like how aggressive you want to play. The problem is you're already quite low on health, so maybe you're inclined to trade. Well, on the other hand, you are threatening with uh, the value trade from the boss on your own. And also, you're not that scared, let's say, of the battle rage, because it's not run most of the time by Dragon Warrior. Uh, but on the other hand, yeah, if uh, the Twilight Guardian comes to the board, then... Yeah, it gets kind of scary, right? So, but every phase damage counts, so it's really a close decision, and yeah. In general, like, people are trading too much, I would say, so I really appreciate if someone goes face. I appreciate if someone goes face. Like, uh, like, for example, now he deals three extra damage, and... Yeah, it's true, it's true. He hit the opponent trades into it. Yeah, so, if it ends up that he has exact lethal at some point, like, it's because he didn't make this trade, so it can mm. actually really pay off. So, yeah, the problem, like, as, as I see from a suit perspective, he can't really deal with this 3 6. Like, he's missing this power overwhelming that yeah. Argus. A maybe. Abusive would be insane because he could go yeah, like with the brand, brand Abusive. Yeah. Like, Br Abusive would be by far the best card here. Like, insane, yeah. actually. Uh, Dire Wolf is okay, I would say, in this situation. It's one of the better pickups because you can just hide it behind, like, a White Walker. Yeah, we just developed the three minions here because you set up a lot of power on the board and. That's exactly what you want to do with the zoo because, like, life tapping is, you know, 
kind of too slow and it's very difficult for Zoo to come back on the board. So I think mm. this is like uh, the correct play for sure. And also the positioning is good because most likely the Voidwalker is going to die. So Alpha can buff uh, the minions on the both sides. Yeah, I agree. Um, so the warrior has quite some dis decisions here to make. Like, So the options are probably the frauding and Warrex. the Warrex and killing the Alpha. Yeah. And the other option is to develop the Guardian, but I think uh, the Guardian is going to be also slightly strong later on, and Alpha is kind of scary on the board. So, yeah, like, it, like it would be like really dangerous, like to keep it untouched. So yeah, and the throwing is also kind of a threat. It has to get dealt with, and also grows right on yeah. uh, right away. Huh. So yeah, this brand is really not catching up any value so far. Soulfire and Doomguard in the same deck. Interesting. Hmm. So what are the options now? You can go Bran, Soulfire, and discard a Doomguard, or you can go Soulfire right away and see like what hmm. you discard. That I might be actually super interesting, right? I don't know. Like, is a Doomguard hmm. in the hand more valuable than Bran on the board? That's my question. Like, because hmm. I don't really think so. Because you, I mean, if you could play the Doomguard right away, of course, but you can't. So. So uh, but actually, Ignite choose the other options to tap, which is risky. On the other hand, one uh, on, from one perspective, risky. While uh, none of the plays were like actually optimal, and he probably doesn't want to lose his Doom Guard. So now we're probably gonna see the Alpha and then go for the 50-50, maybe with the Sulfur. Yeah. Maybe with the Sulfur, probably. I like it because otherwise you're just way too weak against like a Rara Jingul. Yeah, like if you trade your board away, oh it's like. You're spending a lot of resources with the Soulfire, but uh, this is tempo matchup and you don't want to fall behind. So I would go for Soulfire. If you discard the Bran, you can go with the Doomguard next turn. If, if you I discard agree. the Doomguard, you can just develop the Bran and add the other minion. So yeah. it, it's kind of a big deal here. I feel like the Doomguard is like so much stronger. Yeah. Hmm. Inner Rage and Dragon Warrior, interesting. Yeah, the Inner Rage is in the deck uh, probably to activate a Grom to yeah, deal 12 aggressive. damage to face. Which is very valuable in more control matchups. Mm, what would you do here? Like, uh, it's pity that you cannot set up your opponent to 15 and play the 9-9. Yeah, it would be super uh, good. So I would probably go with Guardian and slam the Dire Wolf. Just keep the Warx as an and, option. And uh, I would keep the Warx probably. And you can also enrage the Imgang boss if you want to, because yeah. then it's more likely that your Guardian is going to survive. So. Mm. Or you can also keep their inner edge, but that's super close here. Like yeah, it's a very close decision. But like, it's so key to get uh, behind on the uh, uh, ahead on the board because otherwise you will not set up the nine nine crusher. Okay, this is interesting. Like this is this adds the uh, highest power on the board. So mm, it's very aggressive, right? It's a very aggressive play. I mean, in this case, it might actually pay off because. Well, now Ignite should start raising because the water is at 15. I would like this play if he would be at 30, let's say, and he would mm -hmm. need it to be aggressive while if Ignite starts racing. Now go face for 7. It could go wrong, but he chose to trade, which I'm not sure about. Like, Yeah, I think that you give the warrior too much time to catch up here. It's a problem. Yeah, like he could deal. Like The problem for Ignite was probably from his perspective he didn't set up the two-turn clock, but... On the other hand, he can still top deck a lot of stuff, and also he wasn't at turn two clock back, so I, I would really go mm. face from Ignite's perspective. Mm, now it's uh, are the option whether you develop the two six minion or you just pass and wait to get a dragon. It's quite valuable well, to get this two six body on the board. I, right? I, I would develop it here every time. Like you will because uh, most of the zoom minions are two twos or these kind yeah. of so it, you really like to have like minion to clear them. Yeah, I mean what what does the dragon synergy doesn't even mean that much here because you want to follow up with Grom anyway. Yeah. So yeah. I like so. it like the way Saiyan plays it. Yeah. Like a very strong pickup for Ignite, like now he has three minions on the board, both two of them have divine shield. Mm, that's okay, actually wow, is that actually fight? better? It's interesting. I don't think so. I don't right? think so. You just develop the Grom and mm -hmm. uh, clear one of the Tutus. Then the Grom gets enraged. Mm -hmm. And the next turn you can eventually go face if you use your weapon yeah. and the 2-4 dragon. But most likely you're going to be like uh, very close to dying. So I don't think you can go f can afford to go face. Oh, double Wrathguard. Now oh. it's getting dangerous, huh? It's not a good draw because like... 
the, the Grom can like trade him away and also deal 10 face damage, which is like... <laughs> it's interesting because you can trade with the board and still get the face damage in here. Yeah. But yeah, it kind of starts hurting him, but he, the one turn where he didn't go face. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, now he could theoretically kill the Drake. <laughs> With it, the minions. It's super good like to play like he didn't see a ghoul yet, maybe like even a second slam or a war axe, he gets punished really hard by this stuff. But on the other hand, like Are you winning the longer game? Like As the As the zoo, like because mm. there's a corruptor which unfortunately doesn't Oh it's, it's actually a super big deal that the Grom can't connect here. Doesn't shoot, but like still like you kill your two two, you clear the the 1-1 one, one with uh, your weapon, you develop mm -hmm. the 5-4. And what your opponent is going to do, he cannot uh, trade the Grom away with 4 free. So unless he pick up the lethal, I think he's going to lose. So he needs... It's actually not that unlikely. We haven't seen no POs yet, Yeah, right? he needs PO or Doomguard, basically. Or Soulfire, if it's in the deck. It's 4 damage okay. off, right? No, it's 2 damage it's, off. It's 2 damage off. So yeah. you need to develop the Taunt. And you can mm. uh, clear... The five four, which one of the four uh, ward guards, because then uh, the Grom cannot connect to the face. Yeah, you only need the Grom to not connect here, and you're pretty much, let's say, okayish. So, yeah, you need to trade, which like kind of hurts you. Obviously, go to nine, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, you deliver. Uh, I like six face damage. I like just killing the corruptor here, and you also want to set up the lethal, so maybe just corruptor and abuse the face with the arrow. Yeah, yeah, or. Theoretically, you can trade out the Grom with Abusive, oh. but I don't like it at all, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah. It's like giving the Grom the guaranteed 10 damage. Okay. Face damage. Mm -hmm. He goes face both, which surviving at one, but now he dies to execute. So. He would have died to execute. He would have died to execute anyway, so now he can get the value traits and also kill him, which is like... I feel like the Su got super punished by not going face. Yeah, if he would go face instead of clearing the sixes, I think he would want the game yeah, image. Yeah. Which like seems to be like very minor decision, but yeah, like these decisions cost you the game most of the time. Yeah, yeah, of course, like it looks like a really minor mistake from outside, but in, gen yeah. uh, in the end it's like a super big deal. So Sain just stays with the Dragon Warrior. Hmm? It's a very strong meta deck and beats one of the, let's say, more favorable matchups here, but I think... Maybe Ignite has just a nice. So what Ignite counter. does have? He has Rogue, and he has Shaman. So in general, the Rogue is the Rogue class is good against the Warrior class because the yeah. Warrior has a really big ta hard times dealing with gadget sun concealed. So especially if we pick a backstab SI into Teacher, <laughs> then we start talking. But on the other hand, like uh, the Dragon Warrior is such an aggressive deck, it can uh, set up the Rogue also the hard times, like if you curve out well, but yeah, I would say in general, this Rogue is minor favorite, like 55%. Yeah, but it's one of the Dragon Warrior hands I see where Richard would say, who you, 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 this might get actually really close, especially if... Like he need to pick up the Dragon to uh -huh. get a charge. I mean, even if he doesn't, he can just equip the War on two and it's still fine. Hmm? Okay, he pick up the perfect draw. Yeah. Hmm, that's interesting. It's huh? interesting play because he plays around backstep. Uh, backstep SI, which is really nice. And now, from Ignite's perspective, you could develop the free free, but you will miss uh, the value from the two damage. Uh, so really nice, really really nice play f from just then. Okay, mm. there's a frog ink. Yeah, it's really nice because if, even if he plays the backstep SI now, he can just develop the dragon and just kill it right away with the axe. Yeah. Okay, hmm. so what you do as Ignite? Unfortunately, you cannot double backstab the 2 4, which would be best with the teacher, so you just probably backstab SI. Mm -hmm. And then theoretically, you could conceal if you want to get some value of the free free and uh, not got eaten by ah. War X, but on the other hand, conceal is very valuable resource. So yeah, especially if you have something like a teacher in the hand, right? Yeah. This so I would probably just pass, which. Unfortunately, obviously you're not happy that your free free dice to war eggs, but you also don't yeah. want to throw your cards away. I mean, this Rokan is like, it's super fast, like it has a really 
fast start, but it might run out of steam. And the Dragon Warrior just has consistent threats on the board, which just gets... Yeah, it uh, really depends whether he will be able to pick up some big minions like Azure Drake mm. or Gadget Sun to get deeper into the yeah, I mean, you might just conceal the teacher here. Yeah, and what, get some yeah I would really love to see it, because then you have hand full of spells, so you get a lot of tokens the next turn, and... I mean, just start going aggressive yeah, to yeah. Cold Blood. Right? Obviously, it's like a very risky play, because your tokens would die to Revenging Ghoul, but... Uh, like uh, Ignite don't have that much choice because he's like you cannot fall behind against the dragon where if you take a lot of face damage then the 99 is coming and mm -hmm. okay. you can only step it once but you you cannot like deal with it so hmm. i really like if ignite starts fighting for initiative and just play teacher backstep conceal yeah like it's next one you can just step the next upcoming drop and eviscerate the drake hmm. yeah that's good Finley, huh? Okay, so what's the play here? <laughs> yeah, like this, the Guardian is actually quite of a problem for a rogue hunter. Yeah, like also like uh, you would be tempted to, like to develop the other break, but then you would lose like the dragon dragon synergy for Guardian. So mm. I really like this play. It set up a lot of toughness on the board. But so. now Ignite can actually start punching back. That's pretty sweet, yeah, especially yeah, like, a poison pickup. You should play everything here, right? Yeah, just. Just sap the three six, eviscerate the other guy. Probably punch the Finley and cold blood. What would you call blood? Probably the one one, right? To split yeah, I think the you, threat. you lose against Ghoul anyway. Yeah, you lose to Ghoul anyway, so you should just take a risky play and hopefully get rewarded. Yeah, I think so as well. Okay. Mm. I am ready to learn. Just sap it. Start hitting real hard. Yeah, like especially like uh, just saying, just pick up the hunter hero power, which is in general good against rogue. While now, if the rogue is ahead and uh, he's threatening to deal the last damage, the rogue zero power not gonna, uh, the hunter zero power not gonna help you at all. So uh, I'm curious. I think you shouldn't hold back the sap here. Yeah, this has to come down. Yeah, it's really nice play. Mm. Yeah, it's actually a big deal what he buffs up here with the cold blood, huh? Yeah, I think you should buff the one one most likely mm. because because it. now like I don't know like obviously if he has blood to Iker then he needs to execute to kill the teacher as well so hmm. it's less likely but now he got really punished because yeah, that, that really hurts yeah. because he lost this teacher and he also like lost the big minion from Cold Blood so now he's out of resources and yeah and the guardian. Guardian is gonna, up the one -one gonna nice. hold and yeah, he doesn't have that much loss. Like, but on the other hand, like the uh, the warrior doesn't have that much defensive mechanism. Like, he, he played the second guardian. Does he, does, does he need it though? Like the it's like it's not like the rogue has a lot of burst left. He used already a Well, he blood. he's still gonna have like three one ones left, and it's not gonna be that easy like to rid out of them. So. Hmm. So let's say he will use the weapon and free one once and go face Ooh, for free. That does nothing. Huh? Okay, that's not very appealing because you can ho save the free one once, but they're not gonna be enough to win you the game. Yeah, and they die anyways if they are picked up. So I would probably keep the conceal in case I, I will top deck the gadget sun. Yeah, because I feel like that's a win condition here. Yeah. Rock has a, let's say, reasonable health pool still. So what would you do here? You can... Mm, you just try to 18. play S. You can put him at 50 and develop the Crusher. Is it worth it? I mean, it might be worth it because... Like, because you are threatening a uh, little. Yeah. yeah I, I really so. like it because then the rogues need to start play defensively. Yeah, I like this a lot. It's really good like not to be just passive because... Eventually he can top deck a Leroy or something and uh, just win, but uh, like now you don't give him any time. Mm, to be fair, I... Hmm. That's such a big deal. He would have hit this last turn for an hour four, and this turn for an hour four, so he would be already like eight, would already have eight health less. Yeah, like the game would be completely different, like just saying would probably choose like completely different line of play. So what do you do now? You need to trade the 2-2, two -two, not, yeah. not to die. And then? 
and then like you develop the teacher and probably conceal and you put your opponent at 13 and you will have five power on the board plus he will the put weapon. You, so you, you have to it's kind of hard to pick up a good follow-up here because you will be at one then in the end and he just hero powers you to death not yeah you need like shift to into leroy to win <laughs> it's crazy which is obviously not very likely that it will happen but it's not 100 percent yeah Hmm. It's good that uh, Justin choose the aggressive play because yeah, now of course, it would be like... Okay, it's still not lethal, so you just Azure Drake. Yeah, it's not like you have many decisions here to make, like you just need yeah. to Azure. And hope to pick up the War Axe to have a lethal. Okay, if you slam, do you have more out? Oh, you have Corcoran as an out. It's a really nice play. Hmm, yeah, that's true. Or Corruptor. Oh. There we go. That there was we go. Nice. It was pretty sweet. It, it was pretty sweet, yeah. I haven't seen it, so... Very well played by just saying. So we have Dragon Warrior versus Shaman left. Which is actually one of the best matchups if it's like aggressive Shaman. No, it's good matchup, but it's still like 60-40 because mm. like... The Shaman can just go crazy and like be there anything, so... Yeah. I feel like... Yeah, some missteps from the Rogue here. Um, actually, it hurts a lot. Like he missed like twelve damage in the end because he put. Well, I wouldn't put it that way. Like because let's imagine there would be no execute, and just Butwiker, then he would just kill the five one and like obviously he would have a teacher left, which would be huge. But like he was not playing around the combination of two cards, which is understandable. But on the other hand, he got really punished. So I'm not sure like if it was like mm. super bad or I I don't feel it. Oh, it's mid range shaman. It's even worse for the shaman. I feel like. You feel so? I feel that the matchup is actually pretty close because you have good answers of hex and the things from below are kind of kind of good. Yeah, but you so. have these in um, aggro shaman as well. The thing from below, like the lightning storms, are also not that good. Yeah, that dragon. Like, Finley on turn one is kind of a big deal against Shaman. Yeah, like because it's that, super good. Because, because the warrior hero power is really bad. Yeah. yeah. So, what hero power would you like to choose? Like, if you. If you Fire could, Blast is nice. Uh, the mage or the warlocks, right? Let's meet the team. Especially if you don't have the two drop, the warlock is also super appealing. The problem is, you don't know if it's aggro or mid range Shaman. Like, against mid range Shaman, every time warlock, but he's probably going for the. Uh, yeah, for the Fire Blast, because he wants to play more defensive. Yeah, like in general, the Fire Blast is better than the Druid Zero Power, because you can like kill something with the weapon and also ping the other minion. Yeah, I can see that. Or if you like finishing out the big minions, it's also like not damaging you. So I think the Mage Zero Power is in general slightly better than the Druids. I would like to see an Execute here, maybe. Hmm. So just attack, execute. What? Yeah, and then you just follow up with the Drake. Your, your opponent is overloaded. The worst case, he has a second totem golem. That's interesting. Yeah. Now you've, uh, but now you can't develop the trick. Hmm. Yeah, he, uh, he evaluated one free over, over the coin, basically. Yeah. By this play. Which is interesting, like because the one free can ki kind of kill the one ones or like with the with ghoul it could uh, uh, finish the totem. But on the other hand, yeah, it just died to Rockbiter. It's kind of sad now. Like, yeah, next turn he will just play the wolf straight into a ghoul. Yeah, might might be a, might actually kind of a big misstep here because the early game is so relevant in these matchups. Yeah, it's true. Uh, now it can just snowball. Yeah, it kind of hurts. The only well, thing like, we have now the Cor Corcoran is gonna be really good. It's I gonna think even the Twilight Guardian might be well because this he's overloaded now and this, this board doesn't really trade up very nicely into the three six. Yeah. Like both places are really good. Like on the other hand, you could be scared of Hex if you play the Guardian. Mm, yeah. Tracks like the biggest punish threat. Even Flame Tongue is not even bad. Flame Tongue is not that bad, but uh, this is like super safe play. Like you, yeah, because you have two two guaranteed kills on the minions. So, ooh, ooh, 
that's a crap. <laughs> that's that's yeah. unfortunate, right? No, I think. I think just saying is still fine. Like now he has super strong minions. Like he play Corruptor next turn, he will play Cardian and Warx. I like maybe the ping here. Like you can just play Warx ping and then Corruptor. Is that better? Mm, I don't think so. I think your hand is stacked enough so you can develop the five four. Like uh, the difference is, hmm, actually. It's pretty close. I, it's actually I, I, close, yeah. What now? Like you, t you take two extra face damage, and uh, an advantage you got like the weapon equipped, the and weapon equipped, and two bodies remain on the board, which it's is for sure about better against flame tongue totem. We would get punished by flame tongue here quite hard. Probably, yeah. But like uh, the next turn, like if you would develop the War Axe, you wouldn't have as good next turn as you have now. Because now you can just develop the Guardian and play the War Axe, which is super strong. Uh, is it? Like maybe <laughs> not, not anymore because like yeah, the Fire yeah, Elemental yeah, it's, it's showed it's on the board. But it's still not bad. Like you can just finish the Fire Elemental with the War Axe the next turn. So Yeah. But yeah, the game is... I would say the shaman says the initiative. Because now he's basically developing onto empty board. And yeah, it could be like uh, the wasted coin that uh, put the just thing behind. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh Tauntum is kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's a super big deal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tauntum is just uh, rocking up with there. Oh my god. Yeah, and it's. It's game, yeah, right? Because he's gonna take 10 face damage with Alakir, actually 12 if he wants to, and he will die the turn after. So, yeah, we're an interesting game. Like, like uh, the warrior strong seem to be, and seem seem to be good, but yeah, Ignite managed to pick up the the fire elemental from the top was actually yeah, super true. huge. So what you do here? Probably just Alakir. Hmm. And go face. What, what, what wrong can happen? Like you put your opponent two. Yeah, but you. Mm. Because if you play first, you're gonna be overloaded. Oh, is that good enough? You could attack face and hex, and next turn you have lethal anyway. It's pretty unlikely your opponent clears the board. Or you just take the value trade with the like. The problem is like your elemental is at six one, so it gets pinged off anyways. So you might as well just develop the, maybe the wolves and just make. Or it you can just use hero power and see. Yeah, like the thing is, like Ignite doesn't really get punished here by draining the game a bit longer because he has just drawn the hex, so he doesn't yeah, need to. Like finish now, his you cannot lose even if you want to. So yeah, or maybe he'll get surprised. I don't know, but I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> Players are sometimes creative fighting the losing plays. Yeah, it's true. Actually, this could be one of them. I don't. I would maybe say so if there is no hex. Yeah, if there would be no hex here, yeah, then it could happen. Now he needs to play Ragnaros and be lucky, obviously. Ah, it's 50 50. It's 50 50, yeah. So it's lucky to win 50 50, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't <Like>. win even. <laughs> it's just like the worst outcome. <laughs> yeah. I just hex and think from below. Yeah. Yeah, this game is over. So okay. Yeah, Midrange Shaman is pretty dangerous if you just. Yeah, I've told you, like, the Midrange Shaman is not a bad deck. Like. Mm, so Sane has. I mean, this is. Yeah. Sane has Shaman and Ridlift. I want to see the Shaman. <laughs> like, yeah, like, uh. Actually, I think the Shaman is gonna be strong because uh, Justin is running the Town Shaman, right? Mm, the, I'm, the, not, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. The, like, the Bog Creeper and. All the cool stuff, or do you think it's aggro shaman? It might just be aggro shaman. Actually, yeah, yeah, it's actually very difficult, like for Ignite, because now he has no clue which shaman it is, and mm -hmm. it's very difficult, like to mulligan, like because let's say against the aggro shaman, you want to have rock biter, yeah, and all the removal, while it's against the control decks, you just need uh, the curve. So, hmm. How how do you feel about the druid versus uh, the midrange shaman? The midrange shaman is fine in general, right? Yeah, but uh, the, the York druid is pretty powerful. I feel like like druid can win against anything. So it's true. Um, it's, oh, it's cartoon druid. It's cartoon druid, and I felt fine every time I played a midrange shaman into cartoon druid. Yeah, because I. 
And this mid range, this um, druid list seems also a bit slower. Yeah, this is like uh, the way how you can build Katun Druid are the two variants. Either you play the Weavers and the Beckoners and set up the er early Fortan, or you go with more greedy version, just have a Katun and Dark Akroa and the Twin Emperor, and then you go for longer games. So this is actually the more controlish variant, and I feel this deck fights a little bit weaker against the Shaman. So Yeah, it's true. So he just give it a try and like uh, just think even if you lose this game, he's still gonna have second shot with his shaman. So like his hand is so weak, like it's one of the worst hands you can get, right? Because you know you you don't have any wild girl in your way, then that's what counts. Also, like having York is not exactly. Yeah, this druid hand might just be a bit too heavy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Like you have zero initiative here, and as soon as Shaman starts snowballing, Druid really gets in trouble because you don't have any good yeah. hard removal. Yeah, the Druid is also a little bit... Uh, at least he's a little bit lucky that there's no one-drop from Shaman, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. It, I, I, I'm kind of afraid that the free drop is still going to be enough, so... Yeah, the task. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> so now the task card. Yeah, yeah, now we start going, hmm? Okay. Uh, yeah, there we go. This starts just okay. snowballing. And Wild Girl one turn to light. That's still good because. It's good, yeah, but. Hmm. Is it gonna be enough? Unless like, you pick up something crazy like Inner Raid, probably not, right? Yeah, and the second task is just. Let's see what it does for us. It's like a 3 and 7, right? Okay, so what do you play here? Just under the Tusker, right? Yeah, it's just too strong. And it's also so nice if if you already have a second flame tongue in the hand, huh? Yeah. Oh, what about this positioning? Like uh, it's worse. Like I would attack first and then play the Tusker, because if I get another flame tongue I by this play you would deal two less damage, right? Yeah. It's a pretty good pickup. It's decent. Yeah. It's such a big deal here that you got a flame tongue there, huh? So now you can just yeah, just develop both minions and rock biter. I like that the most, I think. Or you can uh, horse rider and truck, but yeah, both is fine. Mm. Yeah, you just go f face for six, and but I probably like also more developing the two minions. And yeah, the it's also a, bit, a little bit better against swipe. I feel like. Okay, what about this? Bad. This is like this, the is, this is also pretty good. It's like five. This is a little bit dangerous. Like if if there would come uh, the Talnos and swipe, but yeah, but you don't play around that. Yeah, you shouldn't play around it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so crazy. It's the six drop and just gets traded down by free drop. By, by half of the free drop. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> So you can rock biter, the hero power. Yeah, like the, the shaman has just. Will. It's just snowballing and it's gonna yeah. be over in two turns. So yeah. I mean, if maybe the druid survives and the york comes out, but he just played one spell. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. How to survive? Like yeah. it's also like. <laughs> just play with york with one spell. And one spell and doom. get doom. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, actually, if, like if druid would have uh, the card doom it itself, I think it would be like really played heavily in the druid because like yeah because you have nothing else you, yeah. you have like a lot of mana and you don't have like any way how to clear the board so that's why the yog druid is so popular because it adds the druid exactly what it needed yeah it's true i feel so as well hmm. yeah that seems fine and just develop the strongest board yeah like you also deal 10 phase damage which is which is decent yeah or you can deal 14 if you add the horse rider but you can also that's save it for the next turn yeah I mean, I think Saiyan has no out here. The yeah, war. Like it, <laughs> it would be bad if such a card would exist in Hearthstone. <laughs> it would give you out of this situation. I so. mean, York is kind of bad. Yeah, 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 but it's at least 10 mana. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, I guess the, it really depends on the Shaman deck Saiyan has left, huh? I think like that's probably the reason why he picked the Druid first, because he don't want to reveal it. Yeah, it's true. For the next opponents, but now he has no choice. So I'm really hyped about what it's gonna be. What do you expect it's gonna be? Because mm. like he worked with Froden, and Froden brought the Bow Creeper. 
but he might also now surprise that he's gonna play standard shaman. So let's see, let's see. I'm super hyped. Okay, and now it's it's the cool stuff. So what do you think about this matchup? I think it's really bad for Sane because the midrange shaman has the hex and just kind of hard counters the shaman deck. Do you feel so like it's bad matchup? Because on the other hand, like the amount of destruction, like how how does the midrange shaman work? It's like okay. build a board, build a board, build a board. Okay, the problem here is I feel like the most of the times this um let's say how do you call it? Miracle shaman. Uh, like the the ancestral Call. The problem is with that you really rely on like playing the call on like a big minion. Yep. But if it gets hexed for free mana, it hurts so much. But aren't like the big minions just enough? <laughs> you know, it's not about the call. Like you can mulligan call away and like not rely much on this card because like obviously it's a very strong card on the yeah. other ma matchup. So I'll... here you can just let's say put a call on Doomsayer to make sure it will trigger or you will. Get a hex out, out of. Yeah, yeah, it might, 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 might be the case. Huh. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Chad. Okay. Um. Okay, so what's the play here? You just developed the Doomsayer probably, right? Yeah. Because I mean, you don't want to fall behind on the board? Mm, okay, let's see. No, there's no way you can remove it. We could... Okay. You can! You, you can could. roll free and like... Yeah. And it's actually... I, is it that completely stupid? I don't think so, because you don't give the initiative to the opponent. You still have to draw... On... No, but they, like, if you roll two... Your board get wiped, <laughs> your opponent think first, and you also <laughs> overload it, like... So what, what worse can happen to you, like... I like it! I like oh, it. there's <laughs> some balls, finally! Uh, oh, yeah. ta <laughs> oh my god, like... You look crazy. I, I probably wouldn't have such a balls, but yeah. You wouldn't? Uh, uh, would you? Like, uh, I don't know. It depends I mean, like how you evaluate your feel, situation. He's, he's feeling yeah, it. Yes, uh, look at it again, like how happy he is at the moment. Oh, well, I played so well, like free damage, it's so easy. No, Ignite is really, he's, he's <laughs> feeling it, he's jamming the beat. Okay. Hmm. Uh, do you put the mana type? Probably not, right? Mm, it just gets free traded, yeah. right? For no reason. So it's you can it's it's good like to have a discount on this card because you can just play it behind a taunt yeah. whenever like you will clear the board or behind the town so okay hmm. uh, your plan with this deck is just stalling because if you survive to Halasai and Elemental Destruction you will go back to Thirty yeah. And like the board is gonna be cleared, but like okay. uh, the issue for the town shaman is probably the win conditions. Like because we have like six big towns, mm. your opponent has two hexes, and like if he's ahead on the board, mm. yeah, it's true. Uh, so what do you hear? Yeah, you just want to draw more. Like I feel like what ignite oh. just has to try. He's just trying to value trade up the board. Yeah, like he needs to get value all the time. Like yeah, and don't overextend. Do you the think like this matchup can go to fatigue? Actually, yeah, it could be. It could be. It very could be very, very easily, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this mat has doing good job, but I feel like the flame tongue will just end end this and here. And his journey, yeah. Or just the fire elemental. Uh, I like the fire elemental just more. I think, yeah. Yeah, because you developed the more sticky minion, and like. You really want to have like big value trades with Flame Tongue, of, uh, yeah, yeah. let's say against uh, the Bow Creeper or against something like this. So the first Hex is uh, coming. Mm, yeah, it's probably one of the better minions to Hex. Yeah, like, like there's a Valiant, and, but like... Uh, is there? Like, he hasn't seen one yet. Huh? Probably there's gonna be one. But like, uh, how, the best way how to deal with Valiant is Elemental Destruction, because if you play the Valiant, you also buff like three totems. So yeah, then you, all the oh, your opponent's board is gonna get scary, so... 
Hmm. I really like the disuse of the Hex because it's this and Alaki are the biggest minions, so there's no point of saving it. Did you bring some fish? Hmm. Okay, another one one. The question is like how much you want to put on this board. Like it, this is actually super like, difficult it's to play. It's very difficult to play the matchup and uh, the Justin has an advantage. He probably like played this matchup like tw 20 times at least or something like this because you feel the mid-range uh, so often, while from the other perspective, like if you have no clue how to play this matchup from the mid-range, it's so, you know, yeah, but, uh, you counterintuitive. Like, should I add more and try to win? Should I try to fatigue? Should I? Yeah, I mean, you know the win condition of the opponent's deck, which is basically Six towns. getting big board swipes and oh, outvaluing them with the towns by, by them overextending. But is this overextension? That's my question. He basically just has a free drop and a two drop on board. I don't think so. Yeah, that's my. That's also like w what I've been feeling. On the other hand, your board is full. So what uh, just saying could actually do was just to, like take some damage and get some time and get the heal with Havasil back. But he uh, just saves the saves the initiative, which I like because Ignite cannot use the hex like very uh, casually because now. Then the ancestral would come. Mm -hmm. So he needs to deal with the five of the fairway with the minions. So it's not gonna be that easy. Mm, but now the elemental destruction is out and the uh, mana crystals are locked. So might just put a bit more on board now. Yeah, now he should put a lot on the board. While Don't worry, loves. The, the question is whether he even has a lot, like because oh, that's a little bit here, huh? Yeah, it was decent devil obviously. <laughs> Okay, there's no way how to unlock the crystal, so do... What about the play Doomsayer and give it a Threttle? Hmm. Because your opponent has only 8 damage on the board, so he cannot kill it twice. Yeah, and you, you and don't you, want to find the Hex anyways. You kind of lure the Hex out of your opponent's hand, which is probably still fine for him, but at least you don't lose the big minion and uh, the, the, the Ancestral. Hmm. Okay, this is also very good usage because you are gonna trade, so your opponent doesn't have a doesn't have time to get a value of hex. So, hmm. yeah, the storm might be really good here. You don't get that good of a storm against the uh, yeah. aggro shaman. So just hero power and storm here. Shaman. Yeah, hero power storm. And if you deal two to both, then it's still enough to kill it. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Let's go for the free roll on both would be pretty good. Like it, especially on things from below, it's important because you don't want to lose the minion while it was kind of unfortunate. Yeah, but it's not that big of a deal. It could be big of a deal having tr extra free too because the Hearthstone is kind of snowball game, you know. The so. problem Saiyan has here, like he's missing another board clear. Yeah. But if he picks it up, I think he's super favored. Yeah, and if he doesn't. Like, now I, uh, he could be like, oh, it's not going looking well, so he can play just Bow Creeper and Ancestral Spirit, but he would get super punished by Hex, so... Yeah, that's true. Maybe we'll just see Bow Hero Creeper. Power and Bow Creeper, which I like more. Like, you have a healing wave, so if you take some face damage, yeah, you're not happy about oh, it, Oh, that's but a really good pickup. Oh, Azur? Yeah. Do you still Hex here? I mean, Hexing is 7 drop. Pretty good. It's like the highest value minion where they run, right? Like, yeah, but you want to hex like something with Ancestor Spirit, ideally. But yeah, you should still hex three here. I mean, one right? is already out. Yeah. yeah. I would hex here. And then you can just clear trade one once. Yeah, I like this. Okay, this is probably the play I would choose as well. Oh. He didn't have the space on the board. Do I like it or not? I would rather trade the one once and have a yeah, space on the board. Yeah, might be a big board. Might be a big deal. Because now you don't have lethal, so just saying can just far side and pass. Yeah, he needs to pick up a big minion. Like, nah, that's not good. He may even not use the hero power. Hmm. It's actually really complicated. Like, now he has a double faceless, but what does even faceless? He's really lacking a board clear, right? Yeah. But like, uh, your opponent is not pressuring that hard, like, uh, he has 
10 damage on the board, it's not few, but on the other hand, we have heal 14, so we will survive like some time. Mm -hmm. And then if you pick up Elemental Destruction or Storm, play Halasai, heal back so 30. So I would just pass here, not even use the hero power. Yeah, using the hero power from Ignite's perspective might have been really bad. No, no. Like, uh, obviously, if you let's say roll the town or this, you could you save two damage most of the time. Uh, what's he doing? Okay. So he's fighting for the board. Hmm. Oh wow, this this might be a super huge deal. Second hex. So you really want to develop the Drake, huh? Yeah, you just trade one one away, develop the Drake, and you will see. I don't like the play from Justin. It's probably the first big mistake we see from him, like in this series. And also the mod head is also like Ignite just gets what he needs now. He's out of steam and he gets the steam. Yeah, he also put more power on the board because he developed the Drake instead of one one. So yeah, it's true. Hmm, this is interesting. You might just like it's obvious he doesn't have a storm, so, yeah, so going face makes a lot of sense. But he can top deck it, and then you get like super punished, obviously. Yeah, it's true, but you don't play around the top deck here, I feel like. Yep. That's not a good draw. The second hex will just shut that down as well. You can heal seal and heal something, but you're just healing wave here and... Yeah, but he was... He First is to win a joust, which, which didn't happen. It kind of sucks. For him, at least. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of getting... Yeah. And so now he just needs to go all in. Yeah, he doesn't he... have a hex. There's a hex, of, unfortunately. It feels bad. <laughs> but the game is still not over. He can still top deck the EOE. Yeah, it feels so as well, but... but like, I, yeah. I don't feel the storm is enough anymore. It has to be the destruction. Yeah. Well, the storm will, put, will buy him some time. He could faceless the Drake and then storm. It might yeah. be really good. Or we can hard sign. Oh wow, there's there's storm. So you faceless Drake. No, you can't. You can't do that. You, you can. You can unlock oh, your crystals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, then you gain no life. I don't know. Like, if the spell power is better than that, gaining back to thirty, basically. Uh. Now it's very really important, like how the storm is gonna roll. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So the mana tight is key and the two free is key, so... Okay, it's too low that though. Suck, that is not good. Yeah, the Ignite controls his store much better than Justin. <laughs> <laughs> and they, it, it will probably win him the game, so... Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Oh, that hurts. Unless the element of destruction will come from the top. Yeah. But even then, what is really left in Saiyan stack that is threatening? It's like only the Earth Elemental and the Bog Creeper, right? It's faceless to copy Alakir. I, he can, I can see like, him winning for sure, but yeah, it's, uh, it's unlikely. It's unlikely, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it all come down that he probably developed the minion and like... Yeah, I agree. I'll have to board open because he yeah he, pick, he he picked up the storm eventually yeah. so i feel like i feel like it's so well uh -huh. yeah, yeah now it's gonna snowball like if the valiant's gonna remain on the board it's gonna be worse and worse every turn on the other hand i kind of liked it how we ignite continue playing with the shaman he seemed to do well with the deck yeah like the storm at turn three, it was really both a play. Yeah, but he probably like if he doesn't do it, he probably loses. Yeah, it won him the game for sure. Like it's crazy, but he he did it as well, right? Like yeah, like uh, it's a kind of weird trade, but what do you trade here, or how do you trade here? I would probably trade the seven four. Or the two four twos, probably two four twos, right? In case. Ah no no, you want to keep the drawing, right? Are you sure? Like maybe you can just fatigue, like if it goes through the war. And, like, are you sure you want to keep drawing? Like I would rather have like better minions. I mean, he has a second valiant. I think you go for a draw here. Yeah. 
the Valiant even survives the destruction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Valiant survives the destruction. Okay, Karen yeah. and GG. That's little next turn, right? Yeah, you can face the six one. Yeah, very nice series. Like, yeah, just saying was three po on point with Warrior, but yeah, then the Shaman from Ignite. Yeah, it's true. Two control, and yeah, that's it. Okay, very nice series. Yeah, yeah hope you like the series, guys. Cup of Pride. I enjoyed it. It was a good series. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks See for you watching. Later. It was very cool.